Brothers Super Sunday Something Else. Uh, welcome to Super Spirits Brothers. This is a special feature that we're never doing again. Um, hey, ladies. Make it rain. <laughs> that was even more disappointing. <laughs> you tried harder and it was much worse. That's the story of my life. We're going to be doing shielding ourselves. We're, sorry, we're going to be making a list of, um, of five to ten things and talking about why you should argue in the comment section that we're wrong. Uh, <laughs> that part, even though it's not funny. Won't get in. So, I wanted to talk about... Uh, we should stop just standing here with our arms closed. We should do the thing where we don't know what we're doing with our hands. Okay. Yeah. We... I, I wanted to talk about five movies that I think are great films that I um, don't think anyone else should ever watch. Yes. These are not bad movies. They're all good movies. From our perspective. From our perspective. Everyone's uh, opinions differ, yours are just wrong. That's right. Unless they agree with us, in which case they're wrong. In which case we're both wrong. And so I apologize. I was right though. Not even top. These are five great films that you don't need to watch. Not really. Number six. Um, is Mulholland Drive. Mulholland Drive. Um, it's a, it's a great David Lynch film, and I like to consider it, um, to be memento in hard mode. Amnesia. No, no. No, wait. That's, sorry. I like to think of Lost Highway as, um, as memento in hard mode. It's my memory. Amnesia. We've met before, haven't we? Yeah, I don't think so. It's your house, don't you remember? I'm there right now. I like to see Straight Tail as memento in super easy mode. <laughs> he made a movie that's easy to understand. Who guessed that would happen? Um, and it's the one that almost got him an Oscar. Um, it's not a, that's a, that's a, oh, well, obviously. The whole movie is like a puzzle. And it, while some people say it's really important, important to know that it started off as a TV series and it didn't get picked up and he decided to turn it into a movie. Because movies are cheaper. To off-putting. And so basically, what would have taken an entire season, he squeezes an, into an entire film. Now, some people say that's why the movie doesn't make any sense. And I don't disagree with that 100%. It's not that difficult to understand. Uh, if you trust your, your inner feeling. I would say that the film does work on its own logic. It really keeps giving you clues without giving you spoilers what the story is really about. That girl is not in my film! Once you think about it in that mindset, like you said, to think about it as a puzzle, you realize it's insanely depressing. Tu mano me... Yeah. My wife and I watched this, and for uh, weeks afterwards, she was basically convinced she was dead. Not to give a spoiler away, but at the end of the movie, you will be convinced you are dead. You are- Give me the rain! That was disappointing. Not that you don't exist. You have died, and are watching the movie after you are dead. It's uh, just extremely depressing. Um, there's scenes in it where, where nothing really big is happening, but- if you understand what's going on in the film and you've worked it out in your head as you've been following it along, you suddenly realize yeah. that there's no point in living anymore and basically you should kill yourself. Which is going to be a theme you're going to see a few times in this. So great films have that power to um, inspire emotion in us. Often that emotion is not, not just sadness, but sort of... Um, Why? Why bother? Number five! They're all films that are influenced heavily by the French New Wave movement, though. We'll cut this. Nobody cares about the fucking French New Wave. Every movie is who? Number f whatever. Five, four, I don't care. It's Birth of a Nation. Birth of a Nation, great film. Great. Mm. Pretty great film. It revolutionized cinema. <laughs> The reason why movies are the way they are is essentially because of Birth of a Nation. That and The Seven Samurai. That and The Seven Samurai. Sort of somewhere in between Birth of a Nation and Seven Samurai is cinema. <laughs> they changed the way that they did editing back in the day. Uh, this film came out in 1915, 1916, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, it also set the standard for a feature-length movie. There were other blockbusters before then, but it was the first like major, you go see it as an event. It sort of set the sort of action set piece in a very different way than it was done yep. before. And it starred the KKK as the heroes. That's what people remember about this film, is it, is it, is it idolizes or appears to idolize the KKK. Mm -hmm. um, 
Um, some people, you know, people who are overly sensitive and liberal types. PCs. PCs. Will Max. Say, will say maybe, maybe um, Max and Mix, the Irish who we hate and want to eliminate because we're the KKK. Um, um, maybe these, these liberal types would say that the KKK, a movie that idolizes the KKK, probably shouldn't watch it. Similar to um, that famous Nazi film, the greatest propaganda movie ever. Learn how one of America... Triumph of the Will. Triumph of the Will. Yes. Uh, any movie that really idolizes somebody that wants to eradicate uh, an entire race of people, and by that I mean um, motorcycle race. Nobody likes motorcycle race. Hi, Casper. Do you want to hear about Birth of a Nation? I'm going to tell you not to watch Birth of a Nation because basically it's unnecessary at this point. Yeah, if you've seen any other film since then, you've seen everything Birth of a Nation does. Now, there's a lot of people trying to justify why everyone should watch this film because despite the fact that it's kind of got these racist overtones in it that he later kind of apologized for. <laughs> Yes, it's important to see where this stuff originates, but at this point, we've, it's, it's gotten its attention. Watch any other film, you'll get the same impact, and you won't have to watch something that makes you cringe um, as you see the heroes in their white masks. That, that, that have Running in and saving a bunch of white people from escaped slaves, which are actually white people in blackface. <laughs> Number four. Talk about um, one of my favorite directors in terms of his ability to direct, but not one of my favorites in terms of his ability to show a lack of rape. Lars von Trier, who m most of his career, according to him, makes comedy movies. Lars von Trier, I think, is a psychopath. Not really, he, I think he would agree. I'm not saying he's not a great filmmaker. He's a great filmmaker. And I think people should study some of his work. Should maybe even see some of his work. Not necessarily the ones we're going to talk about. Maybe Melancholia. I might suggest seeing that. Dogville was a brilliantly made film. The whole film basically is on a blank white stage with no sets. The acting itself carries the whole film. This is a, a parable. And now, uh, spoiler warning, but I've already told you not to watch the film, so 90% of the plot of this movie is just rape. It's basically non-stop rape for the entire film. So once you've started watching the film, I won't tell you who gets raped, um, but it's not Lars von Trier. I gave that up uh, many years ago. It, it's a great film, it's really interesting, and it really explores ideas of, of um, uh, rape. Things went terribly wrong, and I was uh, foolish. It really explores xenophobia, fear, and revenge, and all these sorts of things. And rape. And rape. And, and the end of the movie is interesting because it's the only time so far in my life, spoilers, that I've um, watched a movie and then gone, thank God they murdered that baby. If you like rape, you know, just sort of recreationally, if you're just sort like of like... casually, like you go to the everyday, everyday rape club on Wednesdays. That's, that's right, um, which is uh, up on campus, by the way, mm -hmm. and it's moved to under the cellar. Yeah. Um, but don't tell most of the people that, because that ruins it! We're going to cut that. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! Edit! That's uh, the editing sock, then. <laughs> uh, or masturbation. Anyway, the... Same thing, really. Um, okay. Yeah. They both involve cutting. <laughs> And it doesn't make it pro-rape, just a show-rape. Um, well, that's my new slogan, actually. It's not pro-rape, just a show-rape. But uh, rape is overused. Uh, it's not necessary. It's a great, it's well done, great film. I have no complaints about how it was done. It's not necessary to see it. There are other great Lars von Trier movies. You want to believe the best about people, but that's not how the world, world is. Number three. Uh, what people call the Citizen Kane of film. Or Citizen Kane of gaming. Of, of film. film. Yeah, it's called Citizen Kane. It's like, it's basically, for those of you who don't know, it's like the Legend of Zelda of film. Yes, essentially. It's like the Final Fantasy VI of film. Final Fantasy VII, more like. It's not like the Final Fantasy VII of film. It does have enough Mac Warriors in it. The trouble is you don't realize you're talking to two people. No way, I'm thinking of Mech Royal. Sorry. <laughs> Mech Warrior! Mech Warrior is the Final Fantasy VII of Mech Royal films. So let's talk about Mech Warrior, <laughs> which is the Final Fantasy VII of Citizen Kane. <laughs> Citizen Kane is a great movie, which you shouldn't really see, because at this point it doesn't really matter. Um, it is, like people say it's the best film ever made, I don't necessarily agree with them. I get where they're coming from. It's like Birth of a Nation, 
revolutionized film. Not immediately, but looking back on it, it did a lot of things that other people ate later, especially in Europe. Orson Welles, um, great the filmmaker. The only guy in that, really. Orson Welles. Now, um, my wife's seen Citizen Kane. She liked it, but she did fall asleep during it. Not necessarily a bad thing. She falls asleep during both things. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that later. I have, not to play the hipster card, but I've watched one of his most obscure films, um, which is one of, actually one of my favorite films, which is Franz Kafka. Birth of a Nation 2. Birth of a Nation 2, even more nation. <laughs> I have seen Franz Kafka's The Trial. Why am I always in the wrong without even knowing what for or what it's all about? That was the movie he made, was forced to make because of Citizen Kane. If you don't know the story of Orson Welles, he was uh, blacklisted from Hollywood after having made Citizen Kane, which is very critical of um, an actual Hollywood mogul. It's obvious who it's about. Sure, he started the war. But do you think if it hadn't been for Mr. Kane, the United States would have the Panama Canal? Charles Foster Kane is nothing more or less than a communist! So he basically moved to Europe and he stopped getting funding. And he started having to move from country to country. And as you watch the trial, you can actually see there's sequences where they ran out of money in one country while he was inside one building. And then they had to go to another country, film in that country. And so you actually see him enter one building, leave a completely different building in a different country in the midst of the film. But it's a, it's the movie supposed to be surreal. It's a surrealistic it's, take. It's a it's Franz Kafka story. It's warm in the bathroom and it's cold in the hall. Any more questions? Why would you want to dress in the hall? Stay here. But talk more about Citizen Kane and what, a, a, a specific. But the main reason you shouldn't watch it is one, everything it's done has been done since then. Not well, necessarily better, but, but it's right. Better, for example. So it's supposed to be surreal and dark, so it actually adds to the film that he keeps going from country to country. And also the fact that the whole movie is based entirely around a twist that everybody knows. Rosebud. <laughs> vacuums. What was English Citizen Kane? Is vacuums or the trombones of house cleaning? <laughs> Rosebud. It kind of gets in the way. It's like the sixth sense of Citizen Kane movies. Shalaman, the creator of Citizen Kane. Kane. Who is the Batman of Steve Spielberg's? Um, <laughs> I thought that Citizen Kane's Citizen Kane would actually make for a great um, endless uh, runner type game where you're actually on runners, like mm -hmm. runners of a sled. And you're actually Spoilers! Young Citizen Kane, mm -hmm. um, and you're like hopping around on moguls and stuff like this. Yeah. And it would be like an endless, and that's right. It would be an endless runner, um, uh, and it would be the, and the only way to win is to stop playing and give up on your dreams. And it would be the Citizen Kane of gaming. Yeah, that's the title of the game. Yeah, I just give it away. Somebody make that. Make and that an iOS game. Make twenty bucks. You'll make twenty bucks, guaranteed. You'll make twenty bucks. Basically, you shouldn't watch Citizen Kane because it's been overdone and everyone knows it. It's not a way. It's, it's not that it's a bad film. Again, it's a great film. No need to watch it. Exactly. Rosebud. Number two! Requiem for a Dream is an amazing story that is basically... Alright, so, I feel weird talking about this movie with my nephew sitting right next to me. I'm gonna cut to the chase. It is an amazing film, emotionally wrenching, one of the most powerful things I've ever seen. I actually got post-traumatic stress from it. <laughs> For weeks afterwards, I'll just be walking like, do, 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 and then I remember a scene. And I go, oh no, no, Welcome no. Yeah. Welcome for a dream. It is terrifyingly good and terrifying, and you shouldn't see it. Or if you do, only see it once, because if you watch it a second time, it's going to make it worse. <laughs> great movie, but since nobody should be getting post-traumatic stress disorder, don't watch it. Exactly. It's uh, like the Vietnam of... Okay. No, and sometimes sometime we'll list great movies that you actually should watch, mm -hmm. but frankly, you can look, there's ten uh, YouTube videos somewhere along here that are all people saying just ten great films box. you have to watch. Yeah. And at the end of this, they'll be like this mosaic 
of just ten great films you need to watch. Also, ten uh, really funny sex scenes. Ten of the sexiest... Ten pictures of cats being vaguely disappointed by the new Star Wars So, wh when you've done this video, watch... Wrestler, uh, mostly a fun film. Kind Fountain, of, you should see. It's great. Fountain, uh, I haven't seen it, but I hear it's great. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, um, Black Swan, I've seen it. That's another one where, you, at the, in the middle of it, you might feel like you should probably stop existing. But it's, it, it ends sad, but in sort it of a ends, happy way. It ends in the same way that the rest, though, ends, really. Yeah. Darren Aronofsky, amazing filmmaker. Most of his films fall into the really good... You could probably miss them and live a happy life. And what, what's the name of the Darren Aronofsky movie? You uh, think? Pie. Uh, a pie, I don't think you, there's any reason to miss that. It's very upsetting. <laughs> it's really upsetting. Number one. Alright, um, the next one on my list, um, Star Wars. Don't watch it. Don't watch it. It's a waste of time. Bye, Bottle. Uh, no, the real reason not to watch Star Wars is not... the extended edition suck! There's so much disappointment in Star Wars. If you haven't seen it yet, you can be one of those people that goes around, and when somebody goes talks about Star Wars, you can say, Oh, I, uh, I haven't seen Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, yeah. I don't, oh, Yoda? I don't know. Who's that? Is he the guy from Crawl? I really liked Crawl. You lose the ability to be basically a complete asshole. I had to self-censor the story down. It's a, it's a fun movie. It's a good movie. Like most of the films on this list, it changed the game in a lot of ways. But Not necessarily for the better, but it changed the game in a but Major. instead of watching Star Wars, you could just watch, um... Jaws, which is the same thing. And has a shark. So many movies that tell basically the same story. Hidden Fortress. You can watch The Hidden Fortress. Which is the Star Wars of Kurosawa film. Which is the Star Wars of Kurosawa. You can watch any Kurosawa film, and you'll probably, if you can get over the slightly slower pace, you'll probably find it just as entertaining as Star Wars. But you don't have to wear a helmet. And unless you had like. You have to have like five hours. Of Plus, you already know the plot of Star Wars if you haven't seen it. If mm -hmm. you've seen any breakfast cereal commercials, any cartoon show, or seen anyone on the internet talk about anything, they've probably spoiled the entire plot of Star Wars for you. You know how it is. You know what the little do 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 is about. Uh, you you know all the stuff. You know that, that there's a Death Star and it's not a moon, That's not uh, a moon. and it blows up. And you know here's the Force. You pretty much have seen the whole movie. It's like it's. Like, I've never seen The Karate Kid, because I don't need to see The Karate Kid. I've seen a movie since 1982. Go to a con, watch anybody in a costume, and you'll basically see a, a portion of the plot. Go to five or six cons, you'll see the whole movie. Or, if you want to see the movie, you don't have to watch the extended editions and line the pockets of an insane person. <laughs> you could instead watch the any new versions which would line the pockets of Disney. Chicken version, or the Family Guy one. The, the robot chicken version, or the Family Guy version, or the Lego the same version, thing, but with or the Lego jokes. version, or the Lego version, the Lego, the Lego version. Just play the, the Lego, Lego games. They're pretty fun. Or the ASCII version. Yes, yeah. ASCII is that people call ASCII. It? I call it ASCII because then it sounds like you're having ASCII, and that's how you poop. <laughs> Excuse me. I'd like to uh, insert my ASCII if I could. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of my asterisks. You know, there's... Anyway, We've been talking for too long. There's so many different versions of Star Wars that show the whole story. No need to actually watch the film if you haven't seen it at this point. Keep yourself with that sense that you're better than everyone. Read all the novels. Yeah. Read all the extended stuff and the slash fic and everything else. There are a few franchises that reward you less than Star Wars. Star, Star Wars, influential film, changed my childhood, changed so many childhoods, but if, at this point, if you still haven't seen it, and you're not him... Upbeat, downbeat. Upbeat is downbeat. Ooh. Ass to ass! <laughs> so that's five, six, or possibly seven. Seven or eight. We talked a lot. Of... So uh, this has been 30 minutes of your life. Um, of films that are great films that uh, you don't need to see. Is there any film that you actually liked that you don't think anyone else needs to see? Or is there any film that you absolutely hated that you think everybody needs to see? Yeah. That's a list for another time, but why not? Um, put it in the comments, and if you don't put it in the comments, um, I'll go watch Requiem for a Dream. That's my punishment. Don't. Don't.
please, for his sake, for his children's sake, his one children's. Oh, we've got club up on campus. We gotta get under the cellar. Oh yeah! Woo! Ah, come on, Casper. You yeah. can come along. Just have to go to the famous club first. <laughs> we need a we we need a watcher. That's the only way I can enjoy myself. This is my feminist club. This has truly been the Angry Video Game Note of Top 5 Lists. This is